So I've talked about lighting somewhat extensively in the past at this point, and the next logical thing to do in 3D games after that is shadows. The title of this video says Fake Shadows, and this is going to be about fake shadows. Proper shadows in 3D, and I make giant air quotes as I say that, is another matter entirely, and those are almost certainly going to take much more than a single video to cover at some point in the future. But honestly, in a lot of cases, you don't have to do that in order to make your game look good. And in a lot of cases, you can get a lot of mileage out of doing what I call fake shadows, which is, in essence, just drawing a semi-transparent sprite underneath the player's feet. So let's get around to doing that. So my, uh, my current player object in this game is a, is a cylinder. And that's, that's all right for, for certain demonstrations, but for this case, I don't want it to be a cylinder. I, um, I want you to be able to see underneath the player because we will be drawing uh, something to represent a shadow there. So instead of it being a cylinder, I'm going to, um, I'm going to wait for model creator to open and that's going to take a long time. All right, there we go. Uh, let's just create another shape instead. All right, that's the player. That'll, uh, that'll do. Convert those to triangles and let us save. And does it really matter if it's, if it's still yellow like the original cylinder was? I'll make it yellow. We are the planet Saturn. We are playing as the planet Saturn. I should have planned ahead before making this video. Anyway, you can see... All right, let me... Uh... Let me just move you above the ground slightly more so that you can actually see underneath you. All right, so we can see the uh, we can see the Saturn slash UFO slash whatever this is is now hovering above the ground, which is what we want, so that if we draw a sprite underneath it, we will be able to see it better. So next, uh, let's create that sprite. If you have a uh, if you have a better looking player object than me, you might be able to get away with skipping that entire last step. Where are the sprites? For God's sake! I, I don't know what you could do about this, but I really wish there weren't one, two, three, four, five resource types that start with the letter S. Because at this point, like, usually when I'm working on my own, instead of saying create resource, I just find an existing resource and control D to duplicate it so I don't have to find it alphabetically. But still, that is uh, one of the weirder nitpicks that I have about Game Maker. Let me go and, uh, and draw a circle. Let's see, a filled circle should do fine. Um, we can... Uh, that's off by one pixel. There we go. Uh, if you want, you can, you can make it like 50% transparent or something, which is honestly fine. Uh, save that. I will, set the, I will set the sprite origin to the middle. So this is a 64 by 64 sprite. So let's set it to 32 by 32. And let's go with that. Okay, so in the objects in the in the player, the player has draw code, right? No, the camera has the camera has the player's draw code. I should probably I should probably at some point talk about like draw order in 3D and how to handle that. But anyway, where is the player being drawn? The player is being drawn here. So you can be as fancy or as not fancy about this as you want. Uh, you can say draw a sprite. Uh, SPR shadow, some image zero. Um, at zero X and zero Y because we are transformed by the matrix set uh, a few lines ago. So now when we draw this, we will have a, the sprites being drawn as the shadow underneath the player and we actually do not have that. Oh, down here in the console, it says draw fail due to invalid input layout. I've run into that error in these videos before. That's just because the shader I am drawing with has a position, a normal, a texture, and a color. And when you draw a sprite, um, its vertex format only has a position, a texture, and a color with no normals. Uh, we can uh, we can always say we can always reset the shader before trying to draw the sprite. And now you can see there is um now you can see there is a shadow beneath the player. And as I said, in a lot of cases, this is all you really need. You can get away with doing something as simple as this. The flickering effect that you just saw is called Z fighting. That is what happens when you try to draw two objects in the same plane. And the game has a hard time deciding which one should be drawn. There's a few ways you can go about doing that by messing with the depth buffer and stuff, but we can also uh, we can also address that by drawing at player Z plus one or something like that. Something slightly above the ground. And you can see now the shadow is still there. Uh, there is no more Z fighting. It is drawn a sliver above the ground. If you were to put the camera 
in just the right place, you would see that the um, you would see that the sprite is technically hovering, but in um, in most cases you would not know. So this is obviously imperfect. This is just a sprite being drawn on the ground. Uh, you can see you would expect the shadow to be wrapping over this block uh, if it was proper shadow casting, and that is not the case. Uh, same with this ball over here. The, sh the shadow is just kind of slicing through the ball as if it's not there. Same thing with the octagon. Uh, there are some other issues. For example, you can conceivably see this being where the shadow is supposed to be located given the spotlight, but if I were to walk further away, um, the shadow should be more... Um, you, you would expect that the shadow should be more out here instead of underneath me. As I said, this is a, this is very much a fake shadow system. There are a lot of uh, there are a lot of shortcomings that it has, but depending on the requirements for your game, uh, those might not be too much of an issue. Anyway, uh, getting back to this with the shader nonsense, uh, you don't have to use a draw sprite to do this. Uh, you could use a um, you could use a vertex buffer using the sprite as a texture, and uh, then as long as the vertex buffer also has a normal component, you wouldn't have the, uh, the the input layout issue that I had before, and you would be able to get rid of that. Let me just, uh, you could load this from a file, or you could just create it through code, because it's just, um, it's just two triangles, and it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be that difficult. Here we go, this is a square. I've seen a surprisingly large number of people being very confused about what vertex add point is. Guys, guys, hit F1, look at the code. This is, all this is, is so that I don't have to type out vertex position 3D, vertex normal, vertex text chord, vertex color constantly, okay? It's there to make your life easier. It's there to make my life easier and it's also there to make your life easier. If you wanna, if you wanna work with 3D, I've said this in videos in the past, that's something, these are, there are some things that you have to be able to work out on your own. Anyway, this is a square, uh, vertex end. You could vertex freeze it if you want. There's only six vertices in there, so it doesn't really, it's not really gonna make a difference. And then instead of draw sprite, we'll just vertex submit, VB shadow, triangle list, SPR shadow sub image zero, and um, because we are now using this as a texture in 3D, instead of just using a draw sprite function, uh, we will want to check the separate texture page option there. And the clock is ticking on when I'm finally going to make a video on exactly what texture pages are, because I've I've talked about using textures before in Game Maker, but um, I haven't uh, I haven't just dived in headfirst or anything yet. Anyway, uh, the shadow is there. That is probably a more correct way to do this than just drawing the sprite in 3D, because uh, vertex buffers are somewhat more flexible than sprites, even if you have to do a little bit more work. And that is fake shadows. All right, uh, is there anything else? I don't think so. I should probably comment this before I post this uh, this repository in GitHub, though. Let's see. If nothing else, hopefully this is a good way to drive home the point that you may very well not need the um, you may very well not need to do the correct solution to a problem as much as a simple solution that works well in your particular game. Uh, I think I am missing an end region here. Game Maker used to not compile if you, uh, if you had a region and an end region mismatched, but as far as I can tell, starting in 2.3, um, it doesn't really matter if you, if you leave the end region tag out, it'll still work. Since they're not really code, they're really just markers for the, uh, they're really just markers for the IDE. Anyway. The best solution is often the simplest to, uh, if you allow me to kind of sort of turn Occam's razor on its head. Um, code for this will, as I said, be in the video description. And actually, before I forget, because I will forget, let me, uh, let me comment this. 
just a little bit. That'll do it. Uh, are there any other comments I want to add? There aren't really any other comments I want to add. I've, um... Oh, this is a... I see. I, I, put the, I put the region in the wrong place. Okay, yes. This code is a mess. Let's define the uh, let's define the floor vertex buffer down down where we're defining the floor where where we're where we are creating the floor, and let's uh let's define the shadow vertex buffer up here where we're creating the shadow, and that will still work, right? The code will just be a little bit more organized. There we go, much better. Okay, fake shadows, good stuff. At some point in the future, I will talk about real shadows. Uh, like I said at the beginning of the video, they are more complicated and involve math. And they are generally considerably more performance intensive than uh, than fake shadows. But there you have it. Uh, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I tried to post a couple game dev videos a week, often dealing with 3D and or the other arcane parts of, of Game Maker. Uh, I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these, being, these videos being made, there's links to that in places too. Uh, otherwise, the code is on GitHub, and I should probably commit the, the comments changes. Anyway, I hope you found that useful, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Edward Holt, IndiePunch, PoshoDev, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want your name in the credits and to force me to say them out loud at the end, head over to the Patreon page in the video description and join the fun.